Well, lately I've been doing some research on different government sites, uh, trying to learn about radioactive fallout. And please don't worry, it's not like I think a nuclear war is imminent. But I want to have the knowledge. And you know, it is better to over-prepare instead of under-prepare. So I have to ask, do you know where you would shelter from radioactive fallout no matter where you were? Well, watch this video. Hey, my resilient citizens, Prepper Potpourri here, and I have another video on how to keep your family safe from the unexpected. And if you like videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon so you'll be notified of future videos. Now, on with the video. So one of the main things to consider is where would you shelter in a nuclear fallout no matter where you are? Remember Hawaii scare? I remember seeing footage of people scrambling to find shelter, even going down manhole covers. So maybe you have a place to shelter in your home, but what happens if it would happen when you're commuting to work or when you're at work or when you're picking up the kids from school or when you're shopping or just out for a walk? Where would you shelter? Well, that's what this video is going to explore. Now, I am a firm believer in Murphy's Law. If anything can go wrong, it will go wrong and at the worst possible moment. So first I'm going to talk about three things that are important when you calculate your chances of survival from a nuclear disaster. And then we'll get on on how to pick out the best place to shelter and what to do when you enter that shelter. So three things to consider. Number one, time. The time that you are exposed to the radioactive fallout really increases your chance of health risks. And it could be, you know, minor, just like your skin turning red, but it could also be your skin just about boiling off from burns or you get radiation sickness or what they call acute radiation syndrome. And two months later you die or you develop leukemia or other cancer way down the road but it all depends on how long you were exposed to that radiation. So time is very important. So of course the next one is distance. The further you can be away, the better. But it's even better if it's the further you can be away upwind because that wind is gonna carry that fallout with it. So make sure you know what's the direction of the wind. And shielding what's between you and the radioactive fallout. You know, for instance, brick is better than wood. So we're going to talk about that a little bit when we talk about sheltering. Now, if you're in the epicenter of the blast, you really don't have to worry about anything because you will be vaporized and you will cease to exist. You'll be in a big fireball and that's it. And that big fireball picks up soil and water and things from the ground and it brings it up into this big mushroom cloud. And then the radioactive material mixes with all this vaporized soil and water. And as it cools, it condenses and it turns into fine dust particles. And when that dust falls back to earth, you have radioactive fallout. So it doesn't happen immediately. It starts happening generally about 10 minutes after that initial blast. Now, you don't wanna be outside either for the blast or for the radioactive fallout if you can help it. But if you are, try to find something that you can hide behind, but drop straight to the ground, face on the ground, what you want to do is have the least amount of exposed skin. So you're on the ground and you're going to remain flat 
until the two shock waves are gone. Now, if you're in your vehicle, stop that vehicle, duck on down if there's no place you can go to until the shock wave passes. And then, either being outside or in that vehicle, you have about 10 minutes to get to another shelter. If you have something, a scarf or something, you can put around your mouth and over your nose, even better. So you're gonna get up from that ground, and shake off as much soil particles as you can, and you're gonna to race towards the nearest building. And if you have your choice, pick a building made out of brick instead of wood, or one that has a concrete basement. But any structure is better than no structure at all. And remember, see which way that wind is blowing and try to pick a structure that's on that other side, not the way the wind is blowing. Your best bet is in a windowless room that has few doors and it's centrally located in the basement of your home or a nearby building. It's similar to what we use where I live when we shelter from tornadoes. Basements, which generally are rated with a protection factor of 10, will reduce the dose to one-tenth of the outside dose. And a PF10 is considered adequate. But if your home doesn't have a basement, then a room in the middle of the house is best. A single-family wood frame house without a basement has a PF of 3, which would reduce the dose to one-third of the outside dose. So it is better than nothing. Now what happens if you're at work in a big office building. Well, you want to shelter in a space in the middle of the building. So not the top, not the bottom, not either sides, right in the middle. So you have all those other rooms cushioning around you. What happens if you're home and it happens? Well, if you have time, uh, get your pets inside and you want to close your fireplace dampers and if you have central air conditioning or heating, you want to turn that off and close your windows and lock your doors and then go into whatever room is your shelter from radioactive fallout. So inhaling fallout is not a significant source of exposure to the predominant forms of radiation and fallout, which is the gamma and beta radiation that settles on surfaces after the detonation. Now, of course, if you have a proper gas mask and protective suit, you'd want to wear that. But if you don't, you can put a cloth or something over your mouth and your nose. Now, some people say it should be, I should say some experts say, it should be a wet cloth. However, there is this warning. What material could actually enhance the amount of inhaled particles? For example, celsium chloride, which is often associated with a dirty bomb, is water soluble, so a wet cloth could concentrate the radioactivity. Now, once you get in the shelter, if you've been outside, remove your outer clothing if you're able to and put it in a sealed bag. If you can't take a shower, and how many of us could unless our shelter was our bathroom, Use a clean, wet cloth to wipe any skin and hair that was exposed, and do the same for your pets. Interestingly enough, we are warned not to wipe with disinfectant wipes, however. Now, if you are inside a good shelter, plan on staying there for a minimum of one day. The longer, the better. And you want to wait for instructions for authorities to come out, which is why it's a good idea to have a radio in your fallout area, more than half, 55% of fallout happens in the first hour. And after one day, over 80% has occurred. So that's something to think of. If you're in a poor shelter, but you would be able to get one pretty nearby, after an hour, you may want to cover up and run to that other shelter, and then again, you'd have to take off your clothes, whatever, but if there was a safer shelter nearby. Now, I have an exercise for you all to do. I want you to think when you go about your normal routine, oh, if it happened right now, what would I do? Where would I go? I mean, for instance, 
What if it happened where I work? I work in a one-story building. Uh, we have no basement. But right next door is a big church with a great large basement. So that's where I would go. Now, what would happen if I was at the grocery store when it happened? Well, where I shop, they don't have a basement. Or if they do, I don't know about it. Uh, but like, just like two buildings over, there's a YMCA. And I know they have a good basement. So that's where I'd go. And that's what I want you to do. Think about where you are. What would you do to keep safe for yourself? Or if your family's with you, what would you do? Where would you go? In the next couple of weeks, I'll be making a follow-up video to this. And it's what supplies you should have on hand in your shelter in case of radioactive fallout. So look forward to that video. But I want to reiterate, please don't overstress because a nuclear war might happen. I mean, I had that stress when I was young, right? I, I was born in 1955, you know, that was the Cold War. We even had to watch those <laughs> very poorly done videos, right? Because the Ruskies might drop a bomb on us. Well, it didn't happen. So again, it might not happen. It probably won't happen. I hope it won't happen. So I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about this. I'm going to go out and about and enjoy my day. But it's never a bad idea to be prepared just in case. So you never have to say, if only I would have or could have. This is Proper Poopery. Please stay safe. And I hope you are having a wonderful day.